I told you, every telling has a tailing, and that's the he and the she of it. Look, look, the dusk is growing. My branches lofty are taking root, and my cold chair's gone ashly. Feel, feel, what age is that? It soon is late. Tis endless now since I arrived on one last thaw water house's clock. They took it asunder, I heard them. Anselm Kiefer is one of the giants of modern post-war art. His work is challenging and continually significant. His show at the White Cube in London is impressive in scale and in its atmosphere, one of decay and desolation. There are four rooms and a long corridor. Each room contains potent and masterful work, vast paintings, piles of rubble, huge books with leaden pages, heaps of sand bedecked with shopping trolleys, shelves stacked with evocative objects, like a vast storeroom of regret and ruination. There's humour at play in the work that allows it to avoid being entirely serious. Like the eponymous book it's named after, it presents as being a masterpiece, while all the time leaving one with the feeling it all might be a huge practical joke. It's an enjoyable irony. You won your limp up all limp from the fusty hazards, and colours and cuffs were there to the town, and your slur gave... Finnegan's Wake gives Kiefer licence to do almost anything in any way. Kiefer says his work is about renewal. I think it's more about dissolution and abandonment. The end of something is not always the beginning of something else. Finnegan's Wake is the personal inspiration for Kiefer, and setting literary illusion aside, it is a resounding and strong work. The literary pretension weakens rather than strengthens the work, for this viewer at least. A vast painting of a crowd of people, lost souls or figures from a debacle, looking like a perverse version of rapture, or perhaps a landscape of despair. The paint is layered thick over textile embedded in the painting. It reminds me of Goya's last works. He is without doubt one of the great living artists, partly because his work is imbued and expresses his own subconscious experiences and fears. This room has a huge painting of a sunflower in a field, almost religious in its isolation, like some El Greco crucifixion. In the centre of the room is a pile of concrete rubble, a remnant of war or some dystopian urban regeneration. I was disappointed to find out the concrete rubble was not imported from Aleppo or Kharkiv, but merely from his studio in France. He plays with myth and alchemy. If one were to take his work at face value, there is nothing frightening in it, like an artistic fairground ride, superficially challenging, but not necessarily requiring much thought or response. Where it supersedes the superficial is in the trauma embedded in the work. Kiefer says, that when he makes work, it is only later that he realises what it means, something I can relate to. The corridor is a storeroom of things long forgotten, but not discarded. Not so much a cabinet of curiosity as a cupboard of mundanities presented in a curious way. The scale of the work impresses me, but there are many questions. What is the history of these objects and what do they mean? A long rack of overalls in diminishing size, are they the leftovers from making this work? Empty tins of gold paint, a broken garden statue, a goose in a box, and what do they all signify? He's Joe Pimona and his statue ride in the high horse there for Hengist, father of authors, it is himself. This room, with large landscape paintings covered in gold, indicative of the river Liffey, but in fact from old photos he took of the Rhine, Kiefer's psyche was forged in the cauldron of the immediate post-war years in Germany. 
and I think that fundamentally informs his work. There are huge lead books strewn across the floor, a reference perhaps to his obsession with transmutation. Lead into gold? Who knows? Only he does. There is something crippled about his work. It does not ignore pain and discomfort. It thrives on dissolution and despair, without sentiment or intellectual artifice. It is uplifting precisely because it disavows the pretty and the decorative, and is beautiful because of its bleakness. Perhaps I'll leave the last word to Joyce. Night now, tell me, tell me, tell me, Elm. Night, night, tell me tale of stem of stone beside the rivering water, though. Hither and thithering water, though. Night.